Hey all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the Sunday Mini PC. Now, this small desktop computer gets its name from adjustable silicon sleeves that you're able to customize the color on the outside shell, just making it a little bit more playful. Just like an ice cream sundae, you can pick between shades like pink, aka strawberry, blue, in addition to blueberry, a darker blue, as well as black and white, which is also called vanilla, and just regular black there. That being said, this is definitely more of a flagship grade mini PC as opposed to being a super budget or affordable model. It's also backed up by Intel Core i5 processor, a 12th gen chip. More specifically, it is the 1235U, which is a 10-core processor with up to 12 threads. It has Intel XE graphics inside, also augmented by 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of built-in SSD, running on Windows 11 Pro out of the box. Also includes Wi-Fi 6, as well as Bluetooth 5.3 support, as well as a pretty fair selection of I.O. Uh, that you can use, including five USB ports, three Type-A up to USB 3.0 speeds, as well as two Type-C. They can also act as video display output as well. So here is the packaging that it comes in, just as Sunday on the very top. Very colorful and cute, I have to say. Down below the sponge, we've got just a quick user guide. Very well presented, I have to admit. So it looks like we even have some adapters, which are branded by them, including this one made out of aluminum alloy converting between a display port as well as regular HDMI. And then there's just the power adapter, which is actually laptop size. It's not too bad, relatively compact. Specs there are rated on the side. It's using a barrow connector pin to plug into the unit. There's also another external smaller box that says, let's add some color to your Sunday, uh, which is basically a second silicon sleeve that you receive to customize the color on the outside of the mini PC. You can also pick up additional replacements and even more colors if you choose uh, on their store. So this one here is going to be the kind of light blue color. And in the box, there is one pre-included, which is just this black color that gives it a more stealth-like appearance. Or if you want to add that splash of color, you can choose to do so. It's just a silicon wrap over the mini PC. So the actual computer itself Peeling back the protective film, we have a very glossy top surface, almost piano finish going on, but a little bit on the fingerprint smudge-friendly side, even though it looks very clean, and these sharp chamfered edges that reflect the light. The entire body of the mini PC is crafted out of aluminum alloy, so it does have a pretty substantial heft to it, around 3.3 pounds. Front here featuring the Type-C multi-port connector, you also have the USB 3.0 Type-A port, auxiliary 3.5 millimeter port, LED indication light and also a manual power on and off switch, which is also made out of metal, feels pretty tactile. Ventilation for the fans for cooling. On the back here we have the second Type-C port as well as the display port that you can convert to standard HDMI. Two more Type-A ports, Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, and some additional ventilation. And here's what it looks like on the back, which is again made out of metal. So to add a little bit more of resistance to sliding around onto a surface, you really should pop it into the case. And subsequently, this will now prevent it from sliding around when you place it onto a desk uh, or surface. You have all the I.O., which can be also further protected by some of these flaps to prevent dust from going in. And still, all the keys feel pretty tactile and still available once you just pull open the flap, as you can tell there. So it works well enough. It's kind of halfway open. And here's what it looks like with the sky blue color instead, which definitely is a lot more vibrant and eye-catching. In fact, I don't think I've seen a mini PC in this vibrant of a shade of blue before. What I will say, though, is because it is a fairly compact frame, uh, that you can't really pop in a second SATA M2 SSD. So even if you remove the back cover with the four screws, just keep that in mind. Compared to larger mini PC chassis, which may have a little extra room for more expandable, whether DDR4 RAM or another hard drive or SSD, this one here doesn't really have space for that. Everything is already taken up by the components to minimize the shells dimensions. Here's another size comparison with a pretty typical 6.5 inch phone, so you have an idea there. And we've got a very clean version of Windows 11 Pro Edition pre-installed out of the box, no bloatware or any applications here aside from the Microsoft Essentials. And in terms of built-in storage, you can tell that I have around 440 gigabytes left after the Windows operating system has been installed which should be good enough for most office-related work, but you can further augment this with cloud storage, including OneDrive if needed, as well as hard drives and thumb drives, of course, that you can plug on in. 
And now taking just a peek at the synthetic benchmarks, we can see that the i5-1235U scores a little bit north of 13,500 on Passmark, which is actually quite respectable, again for a mini PC that is. Here's also a quick comparison chart with other popular CPUs, again not counting for the GPU performance, but just the processing unit, and we can tell that it actually is quite respectable, just a touch lower compared to the Apple M1 uh, that we can see here scores a little bit north of 14,000 compared to a more popular budget chipset that we have seen in other mini PCs and low-cost laptops would be the Intel Celeron N100. This is a quad-core chip that has a score a little bit north of 5,000, so by contrast this i5 is about 2.5 times-ish more performant from the CPU side at least. And luckily, in this case, those higher benchmark scores do translate to better real-world performance as well that you can feel when moving around the UI, especially since Windows 11 has plenty of different animations, various tiles as you are switching kind of back and forth here, but everything is still mostly smooth and responsive. And that is compared to, again, some of those budget laptops and mini PCs, which tended to have a little bit more lag. Sometimes you have to wait a split second or two for some of these animations even open up and load because of the lower clock speed and less performant processors. So at least on here, everything feels quite speedy when just moving around. So taking a quick look at some web browsing just as a demo, here is The Verge, a fairly complex site with lots of different videos and scrolling elements on the side. But pages mostly render in just a second or two, very quick, and nothing really hangs as you're reading back even more complex articles. Going back and forth, we can also open up another tab here in the background. And jumping back and forth between these tabs, the 16 gigabytes of RAM is also fairly good. I was able to hop back and forth between around a dozen or two tabs in the browser here in Edge, and everything was still held into the system memory. Here's also a quick test of video playback, and let's pull up stats for nerds, as well as crank up the resolution up to 4K and see how it fares. So as you can tell here, watching back clips on YouTube, as well as Netflix, is really not going to be problematic. It loads up fairly quickly, thanks to the really strong Wi-Fi 6 dual band antenna. Even though we're a little bit further away from the router at the moment, I'm still getting around full bars, so no issues here in terms of staying connected wirelessly. This helps, again, the video performance remain quite smooth without any drop frames. Let's also try jumping ahead a little bit into part of the video, a different frame, and you can tell that it's still hangs on here without too many problems. Now, of course, if you are scrubbing super quickly, you may start to notice one or two drop frames here, but they're still invisible to the eye as the video then begins playing back almost instantly. But generally speaking, again, 4K video playback, whether locally or streaming, it's not gonna be problematic on this particular machine. So this is basically the loudest that the mini PC gets in terms of the fan noise, which is still, for the most part, definitely manageable. And similarly for office-related tasks, it's no surprise that this can be handled with ease. These apps have been optimized by Microsoft to work quite well even on lower-end hardware. So even more complex spreadsheets, workbooks with lots of different tabs, formulas, rows and columns can still run on here pretty smoothly. And similarly, when it comes to PowerPoints, animations, different Word documents with more complex templates that you can choose, transitions, again, between different programs and desktops, that you can switch back and forth between also work quite well and you're able to connect up to three external monitors up to 4k on this machine as well without too many problems for just getting a larger screen view so things like photo and video editing with photoshop also worked without a hitch and when it comes to clipping together some short 4k videos up to say five minutes it only took around eight minutes or so to export on this thing so also pretty impressive you can definitely use this one for again video and photo editing work granted again the built-in storage isn't the largest in the world so if you're trying to back up those files later on you would probably have to still use an external hard drive or some other medium to do so but the processing can be done on here surprisingly for such a small mini pc even without a necessarily super strong dedicated gpu per se but the cpu here here keeps things chucking along for even some of these more demanding type of applications. And again, the beauty of having a full version of Windows is you can run any legacy app, whether it's from the Microsoft Store, some social media type applications, light games, or of course the thousands and thousands of different drivers and other existing applications that you can find online will all work on this machine. And as far as doing a bit of gaming locally, it is also quite acceptable for Intel XC graphics, which are integrated, and again with a TDP of 15 watts. But as you can tell here, for even newer titles, if you're lowering some of the graphic settings, it can still play back 
In fact, here is Cyberpunk 2077, which is definitely a triple-A style game, very heavy. Of course, it's going to take up a pretty significant chunk of your built-in memory, but as you can tell here on lower settings, it's still playable, although you're not going to get the buttery smooth frame rates. But surprisingly, it still is an okay enough experience, even on the local hardware here. Of course, if you are looking for let's say the smoothest uh, FPS 24-7 on those extremely heavy titles, you'll be best served with a machine that has a dedicated GPU, although of course it's also going to come at a slightly steeper price point, or you can try cloud streaming solutions including Microsoft and Xbox's xCloud, or of course Amazon Luna, and with a reliable enough internet connection you should be good to go. But again, titles including Fortnite as well as Minecraft uh, will still play back pretty smoothly, especially on some of the slightly lower graphic settings as you can tell there. And of course, even older games emulation style titles which are not quite as GPU intensive will play back even better. This can serve as a great retro gaming PC just by connecting a controller to it, whether it's SNES, Game Boy, DS, so on and so forth, will play back pretty much at the highest frame rates that you'll need on a machine like this. So great for retro emulation. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Sunday Mini PC. It used to be the case that Mini PCs were all about convenience of having something ultra-light uh, compared to a full desktop computer which takes up more space, and getting you good enough performance for doing the basics, primarily just web browsing. But now we're starting to see some more higher-end models creep into the market, some which even have dedicated GPUs, and with much more powerful CPUs inside, is able to handle more as well. Subsequently, you can open up more tabs in the browser, you can stream back videos at Ultra HD without really losing any frame rates, as well as even do some gaming here and there. So this is a great example of a model if you don't necessarily want to compromise on the performance, but you're still looking for a lightweight, small computer at the end of the day, as an alternative to something like a laptop, that is. Overall, it's a pretty decent showing for a relatively new mini PC brand, and it'll be exciting to see how they take this concept further uh, with the whole Sunday theme, for instance, snapping in other modular accessories, perhaps in a next generation model. But a pretty neat showing nonetheless. You can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Sunday mini PC.